This video was produced as an educational project and is not intended to provide expert information. Always consult manufacturer's information and qualified professionals before attempting to service your biomedical equipment. Always follow safety warnings. In this video, we discuss the gas and vapor mixing and delivery mechanisms of an anesthesia machine. We will focus on gas supplies, flow meters, vaporizers, and the anesthesia circuit. We will also review common problems with these aspects of the machine. There are two types of gas supplies, central supplies, also known as wall sources, and cylinders filled with compressed gas. Both typically consist of nitrous oxide, NO2, oxygen gas, O2, and medical air, which is approximately 22% oxygen. Each of these is color-coded. These colors differ between U.S. and European standards, so areas that use equipment from both these regions may have both. In this video, oxygen is green, nitrous oxide is blue, medical gas is yellow, and the output hose is purple. The central supply is used under normal conditions. Issues such as power outages may force the use of cylinders. The central supply wall outlets connect to ports above the cylinders on the anesthesia machine using thick tubes. In addition to the color coding system, the tube connections to the wall are keyed specifically for each gas. The connection for each gas has a slightly different shape to ensure that each is connected to its matching gas. There are two primary pressure regulators that separate the high pressure circuit of the gas supply from the intermediate pressure circuit before the flow meters. There is one for the nitrous oxide supply and one for the oxygen supply. There are flow control valves located between the intermediate pressure circuit and the low pressure circuit to control the pressure of gas that enters the flow meters. These flow control valves can be manually adjusted by the anesthesiologist to control the pressure that enters the flow meters and is delivered to the patient. The failsafe valve is located in the intermediate pressure circuit after the primary nitrous oxide pressure regulator. Its function is to ensure that if the pressure in the oxygen supply circuit decreases to less than 30 PSI, the flow of nitrous oxide will be prevented to avoid delivery of a hypoxic mixture to the patient. The function of the flow meters is to measure the amount of each gas that is being introduced to the anesthesia circuit and should not be mistaken for measuring the amount of vaporized anesthetic that is being introduced. When the system is plugged in to the central source, the pressure readings on the flow meters all go up. Then, when the machine is turned on, the oxygen reading goes up to about 250 milliliters per minute and will not drop below this level so that a hypoxic mixture is not introduced. The amount of each gas that is introduced to the circuit can be adjusted and controlled by turning the dials on the flow meter. The interface allows the anesthesiologist to monitor the percent of oxygen in the gas mixture that is being delivered to the patient. Vaporizers are independent chambers that hold anesthetic liquids, and each is specific for one type of anesthetic agent. There can be multiple vaporizers holding different anesthetic agents connected to the anesthesia machine at once, but only one can be active at a time. This control is managed by a safety control system such that when the dial of one vaporizer is turned to the on position, the dials of the other vaporizers are locked off. The dial that controls vapor flow is located on top of the vaporizer and is turned on by pressing the button located on the back side of the dial and then turning it counterclockwise. When turned on, gas is diverted into the vaporizer chamber. The liquid anesthetic agent will vaporize and join the gas flow to the anesthesia circuit. The amount of anesthetic agent that joins the gas output is proportional to the amount of gas diverted to the vaporizer chamber, which is controlled by the dial. The anesthesia circuit is the part of the machine that delivers the gas mixture to the patient and returns what the patient exhales to the machine. 
There are two plastic tubes that are a part of the anesthesia circuit, one that gets connected to the input and one that gets connected to the output. At the end of the two tubes, there's a mask that is put on the patient to allow direct delivery and return of the gas mixture. Lastly, there is a manual bellows that is attached to the system as well. The gases that are exhaled from the patient are returned to the wall. Leaks in the anesthesia circuit are the most common issue with anesthesia machines. This problem not only leaks anesthetic agent into the room where it can affect medical staff, but also reduces the anesthetic that reaches the patient, potentially resulting in too little anesthesia to maintain sedation. There are two techniques of testing for a leak. The most common method is submerging the circuit in water, blocking one end, and blowing through the other, which will cause bubbles to rise from the side of the leak. If the circuit cannot be moved enough to submerge it, a leak can also be determined by spraying the tube with soapy water. To do this, block one end and blow through the other. Bubbles should rise from the side of the leak. Ideally, a new anesthesia circuit should be used with each patient to maintain sterility. However, in healthcare settings with limited resources, this is not always possible. Under these circumstances, epoxy can be used to seal the holes. The O-rings are located at the point where the vaporizer connects with the anesthesia machine to seal the connector and prevent leaks. O-rings will only be accessible when the vaporizer is removed from the anesthesia machine, which can be done by unlocking it and then lifting it off. Please do note that vaporizers are heavy. Cracked or otherwise damaged O-rings may cause leaks that can have similar consequences to leaks in an anesthesia circuit. These O-rings can be replaced with standard O-rings, which can be acquired from most hardware stores. To replace a faulty O-ring, simply pull it off and substitute a functional O-ring of the same size. The rotometers need to be checked to see if they are still rotating, because sometimes they can stick. There should be a dot on the rotometer that allows you to see if it is spinning. Turn the gas flow up and down and look for the dot to see if the rotometer is spinning with the changes in gas flow. If there is no dot, try your best to determine if it is spinning. If it is stuck, the rotometers need to be removed, cleaned with alcohol, and remounted again to correct the problem.